Welcome to the Data Whisperer Podcast, brought to you by Data Migration International. The podcast where you hear the latest news from the world of data and digital transformation. The Data Whisperer Podcast is hosted by Bill Vall, a technology industry veteran and enterprise software professional. Thanks everyone for joining us today as we continue our discussions about the intersection of technology and business. Today, we're talking about the business of IT and the role powerful ecosystem partnerships can play. Hello, everyone. My name is Bill Wall, and I'm honored to be the host of this podcast series, The Data Whisperer, brought to you by Data Migration International. I'm always fascinated about how to apply technology and services to help companies meet their IT challenges. And having worked for years in the IT industry, I know the power of partnerships has been driving success for the industry and ultimately for end customers for many years. And that's why I'm really pleased to welcome to the program Amit Sinha, president and co-founder of WorkSpan, which is the IT industry's number one co-selling platform. Now, Amit and I were colleagues back in the days when we both worked at SAP, so I'm really happy to have him on the podcast. Amit, great to have you on the program. Absolutely, Bill. What a pleasure. So you founded WorkSpan in 2015. Tell our audience what WorkSpan is all about. WorkSpan is industry's number one co-sell platform where companies can come together on a shared network and work with each other to jointly sell uh, to uh, customers and jointly market to their customers and jointly produce new solutions and innovation together. So we, we enable this innovation to happen. And so the right way to think about this is most of the companies that are in the business of operating in ecosystems have multiple partners in many different directions, upstream to manufacturers, downstream to customers. Your platform helps them navigate all those different partnership structures to, to measure success and progress and productivity? Absolutely, Bill. This is uh, what has changed in the industry. If you think of how companies are going to serve modern demanding customers, they have to come together. They have to come together to bring new solutions to market, to actually put their value propositions together and actually reduce the risk by selling together as a combined stack. So whether you are an ISV working with a hyperscaler, whether you are an ISV working with a GSI partner, for example, to install those solutions, you need these powerful partnerships in order to serve the end customer. So that's exactly what this is about. How do you orchestrate value together so that the end customer gets a better solution, deploys it faster and at a lower cost. So you and I have been in the business of marketing IT, probably combined between the two of us, 40, 50 years. We've yeah. all seen partnerships come and go. And I think some in the IT industry could rightly be critical about partnership announcements that are more PR, no PR noise as opposed to something substantive. How do we know when a ecosystem and a series of partnerships are really successful. Absolutely. Uh, you've really hit the nail on the head with regard to what ails the partnership economy today. It's really about metrics and measurement. I'll draw some parallels with marketing. So as you know, in the last decade, marketing and CMOs got organized. They finally put the finger on the pulse and said, this is how marketing can get measured mm -hmm. and outcomes can be driven with a common vocabulary like marketing qualified leads. Now what we are seeing is that with the platform business models, companies are going to market with partners. You cannot imagine success of AWS or Google or Microsoft mm -hmm. without an ISV partner or a GSI partner bringing and working together, right? Now people have to get measured in partnerships. We need to understand what are the ecosystem influence revenue, how ecosystem qualified leads are happening. So those metrics need to get defined. And not only these metrics, but underlying cross-company business process has to be coordinated now and done at scale. So just as SAP organized you know, finance processes or supply chain processes, now is the time that ecosystem officers, partner officers need to really organize and coordinate the cross-company workflow between two partners. When you can do that, you can scale it. And when you scale it, you can measure it. And when you measure it, you prove the value of partnerships. And that's I mean, how you don't do Barney partnerships. That makes sense to me. Uh, you know, I think back to sort of the first application of similar technology was back when sales teams got themselves organized and Salesforce made a heck of a business on organizing selling. As a marketing professional, we've all been talking about the marketing tech stack for the yep. last 10 years. As we were preparing for this program, you talked about this time as the, the decade of ecosystems. 
is it a decade? Is is this a a big a a component of IT to to call it the decade of ecosystems? Absolutely. Um, this is uh, according to Jay McBain, a prominent analyst in uh, from Canalys and Exforester. He coined the term decade of ecosystems after looking at all these trends. So 2000s being the sales automation decade, the next 10 years being the marketing automation. Now we are talking about ecosystem automation finally. In this decade, I think the EY has, uh, Ernst & Young has written a very good paper on the role of CIOs in actually enabling such multi-company architectures, multi-company mm -hmm. data sharing. So as APIs become the norm, as cloud becomes the natural topology on which people are getting together, what's happening is that IT is changing to new norms of data sharing, new norms of APIs and how cross-company workflows will happen. And that is truly transformational. The CIOs have a very, very important role in enabling this kind of work to happen. And this work is critical to revenue growth for a company. Today, 60%, believe it or not, 60% of revenue flows actually happen and touch a partner. So imagine not automating that. So that's why this is critical for CIOs to get that. So we've seen CIOs think about that from a IT perspective. We know CMOs think about the data from marketing tech stacks. Uh, are we seeing the emergence of a chief partner officer now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the biggest um, you know, trend, uh, if you look at how partnering roles have evolved, is that partnering has now gotten into the C-suite because so much revenue growth actually depends from partnering. With ISVs building new applications on cloud providers, with GSIs driving transformational, digital transformational initiatives for companies, partnering is the norm as how revenue is being made, and especially new use cases are being deployed. So when such critical importance is placed on such a thing, what's happening is that the chief partner officers are getting elevated to the C-suite. And as a result, very, very critical to revenue process. So we've seen chief partner officers at SAP, for example, Carl Farbach, similarly Workday, IBM, Microsoft, they have partnering, and AWS have, they have partnering leaders in the C-suite now. The business of IT is, is always changing. Let's take the customer, the end customer's perspective for just a moment. Because a lot of the listeners to the Data Whisperer podcast sit out at individual businesses. They have a, a lot of vendors that they work with. What should they think about uh, in terms of ecosystems? And, and for end customers, why are powerful partnerships and successful ecosystems so important? Yeah, from a partnering perspective, like if I sit from the customer lens and see the ecosystem or the stack, um, when two part or more partners work together, it reduces my risk as a customer to adopt mm -hmm. that solution. It heck, it also reduces the cost of deploying that such a solution, and 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 ensures repeatability uh, for that solution. And even better, these days, what we are seeing is rapid co-innovation to build new net new solutions on emerging technology. Just look at ChatGPT as an example. The day it releases, the very next day there are over 40, 50 ecosystem solutions on top of such a pioneering technology. Mm -hmm. So the rapid co-innovation, so me as a customer actually gains because I have access to this massive co-innovation. Otherwise I would have had to do this R&D myself or have had to deploy my bigger IT teams or relied on one company to do this. Instead, I can source my innovation from many companies. I can reduce the risk of actually adopting such an innovation. So the, the end customer really wins. So from that perspective, ecosystems are absolutely critical to innovation delivery and eventual success of digital initiatives and companies. Underneath the covers of these partnerships is the exchange of a lot of information and importantly for the Data Whisperer podcast, the exchange of a lot of data. Uh, what role does data play as, from your perspective, leading WorkSpan, how are you helping your customers, those in the partner ecosystems, uh, manage the exchange of data successfully to make these partnerships work? What a great question, Bill. Uh, so if you think of um, any initiative in three layers, people, process, and data, right? In ecosystems, the people part was easy. Right? Let's have business alliance managers and people connect with each other. And guess what? They've They've been doing this for a while. What's different in this trend is about the process layer and the data layer. Now we have cross-company workflows. Business process can start in one company, end in another company. Now we have APIs that can connect to CRM of one company and the other. And now new data sharing and data governance norms are coming in. 
We all recognize what data is private to us and what's confidential and cannot be shared, but we want our employees to have access to that data. But when we share that data with a partner, we want to put some controls and governance in place. And similarly, from the partner perspective as well, that control needs to be applied. So now imagine a partnering platform like WorkSpan, which can actually manage cross-company workflows and actually cross-company data sharing. So as a result of this, you can always be confident that when you work with, once you set this policy up and connect your CRM to it, and so does the partner, you can always be confident you're not inventing data sharing at the, an individual partner business manager level. You've made a corporate policy and that's governed effectively in a very, very nice way. So as a result, you can share with confidence and not really have data leakage, for example. So new IP has come in in this, in this area and WorkSpan is one of the pioneers in this space. And what's even better is now you can report on that data. With the first party cookie data getting, you know, uh, charmed down by regulators worldwide, we can't rely on marketing da intent data as much. But second party partner data is a very valuable source. They give signals. For example, one of the partners that we work with, Cisco, they've been pioneering in this space. Their partner network is actually sharing back what they're hearing from customers mm -hmm. in real time. Now, better informed decisions, incentives, co-selling, co-marketing, co-solutioning workflows can be built informed on that data. So we are seeing data as a very, very key aspect of this whole transformation. Absolutely fascinating, uh, Ahmed, to think about the concept of secure and appropriate data governance for another aspect of the business of IT. Congratulations on WorkSpan and Ahmed, president of WorkSpan. Thank you so much for joining our podcast today. Absolute pleasure, Bill. Thanks for reconnecting. We love the engagement with the Data Whisperer audience. If you have interest in what the team is doing with Amit at WorkSpan, uh, their website is workspan.com and you can reach Amit. He's very active on LinkedIn. And thanks everyone for joining us today. Our podcast series will regularly take a look at the news from the world of data and digital transformation. We encourage you to join in the discussion and we'll have details on how to engage with this series and our program as we wrap up for today. For everyone on the Data Whisperer podcast and everyone at Data Migration International, I'm your host, Bill Wall. So long. We'll talk soon. We hope you enjoyed listening to the Data Whisperer podcast brought to you by Data Experts, Data Migration International. You can find out about our business and services by visiting jibs.com. That's J-I-V-S dot com. To follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn, simply search for Data Migration International. Stay tuned for further podcasts in the Data Whisperer series from Data Migration International.